Hello, my friend. Today I would like to talk about bacteria and viruses. I'll be using a lot of materials from German doctor Stefan Lanka. So if you wanna read more, links under the video as always. One of his teachers mentioned that there is no HIV virus. So he decided to dig deeper in that subject. And yes, in his studies, he found out there is no HIV virus. Of course, he couldn't believe people are lied to in such a big scale. So he decided to study the theory of infectious diseases. Stephen Lang discovered the theory is false. It all started with a mistake and became lies and political speculations starting from 19th century. Later he found out how theory of infectious diseases became as the ground for molecular technologies, genes manipulation. Also from that theory comes job companies based on fear of infections, epidemics and pandemics as we can see nowadays. This story is about how mistake became lies, how big criminal pharma industry began. And I want to mention here by whom we was born at long, long time ago. Goethe wasn't taken seriously still till our days. But when the next pandemic comes, we can remember that we was born at, but we never heard. Goethe's Faust, third edition, where he writes how one doctor kills thousand people. In the beginning he starts with alchemical language uh, describing how he makes the mixture with the mercury, syrup and sugar and it's called Latvergin. And I quote from his book now. The newest medicine we was administering and here our patient went for last walk. There was no question did someone recover from illness? Mixtures and pills we brought, we traveled cities, towns and villages, scary and then plague we often were. I myself killed, poisoned thousands, no doubt. Basically, nobody knew was there a virus that causes illnesses and deaths, or it's a medicine. Now let's go to the theory from which vaccination theory developed. According to Stefan Lanka's discoveries, it all started with theory of poison tolerance, which means if you regularly intake small amounts of the poison, your body would produce antibodies. So next time, if you are poisoned for real, you wouldn't die because you have antibodies. And this wrong conclusion came after experiments of alcohol intake. In small doses, it can relax you, it can make you happier, but young person who never drink before drinks bottle of spirit. He will end up in a hospital because he could die from intoxication, but the politicians making serious decisions after bottle of spirit. idea to intake small amounts of the poison for prevention based on experience with alcohol. If you don't drink at all, one glass of wine would make you tipsy. But if you drink every night, then that wouldn't happen. But it's not because we have antibodies now. It's only because our bodies produce ferments that discharge the poisons from our bodies. Though this was crippled understanding about our immune system, they thought the antibodies will strengthen our immune systems. Therefore, if we face real 
poisons or viruses, our bodies would be in a wonderful. The theory was false, but it already led as on practices based when mercury and sugar liquids was given as prevention treatment in Goethe's time. In case if epidemics comes, people shouldn't get sick because of preventional medicine. During experiments, scientists discovered bacteria can produce toxins. Also, they discovered that they can produce toxins only in dead bodies. Bacteria, it was known fact, bacteria can produce poisons and toxins in a live environment, human or animal, only in dead bodies. In a live organism, bacteria takes part with digestion system and produces useful connections, also vitamins. Those processes are called aerob, which means this interaction of oxygen. If there is no oxygen, as in a dead body, most of bacteria die and which survives totally change their metabolism. Same as yeast changes metabolism and produces toxic alcohol if there is no oxygen. According to German physician Jacob Heinle, if you blame bacteria on illness, you have to isolate exact same bacteria, which is close to impossible. Only 2% of bacteria was managed to cultivate in laboratory. Even more, those cultivated in laboratories was very different than those in natural environment because bacteria is exchanging information. They changing their functions and their shape. It was proven in many researches and experiments. Therefore, if you take bacteria out of natural environment, experiment can't be accurate. One of the Henley's postulates as follows. The possible pathogen, when it's isolated and cultivated, have to summon exact the same illness if brought back into healthy body. But it's never happening. Robert Cole was famous as pioneer of infectious diseases. He mastered microscopic photo making and he was making pictures of bacteria. His first picture becomes something like sign for scientists around the world. Nobody had idea that picture can be corrected. It was called a scientific picture, though proves nothing at all. He claimed pathogen is causing similar disease. That's how lies was brought into science. Not exact same illness, only similar. This was fundamental falsification in the history of infectious diseases. For example, tuberculosis bacteria stick, which Robert Kell cultivated, can be found in the human body. In experiments, Robert Kell kills mouse with corpse poisons. Then he takes vein sample from mouse and put it under frog's skin. She dies in convulsions and that is called Siberian skin ulcer. That's Robert Keo, scientific falsificator. Second thing that comes from Robert Keo is a series of poisons that are developed from colorants who are able to color bacteria, he get them from producers of chemicals and as a result of all experimentators started to use those colorants. That's how they are able to photo bacteria. He found out that those colorants damage walls of the cells, damage bacteria and they die. From those colorants developed industry of antibiotics and all that was based on infectious disease theory. Robert Kell invented medicine called tuberculin, which killed thousands of people back then, so he had to leave the Germany. Otto von Bismarck called him back to Germany because he needed to neutralize English soldiers that drunked cells channel, so they gained huge advantage in a war 
and in politics because they didn't have to go around Africa anymore. They could transport goods and guns through the sales channel. So Germans wanted to eliminate that advantage. They announced quarantine, blaming English soldiers for bringing plague and Siberian ulcer from India. Here, Robert Kell was very useful with his theory of infectious diseases. A lot of money was spent on those colorants and poisons, which many people still taking without thinking that aluminium, titanium, acids, dead corpse liquids and so on are not suitable for any living organism. No, people doesn't think at all. They just pop in pills as candies. example and explained illnesses as demonic powers as punishment from the god the medical courts was made the priest was going around the houses looking for sick people if you are announced as sick you would be expelled from the village in 11th century it was very well known practice even people with melanoma stain or baldness or somebody reports you sleepwalking or even just talking in the sleep, you would be announced a sick person. In 1348, big earthquake destroyed many towns, including Venice, the biggest business center. So the Vatican announced it's a God's punishment and the towns and cities are obsessed with ill demons. So there was another way with inquisitions and quarantines. People was treated with poisonous medicine exactly as Goethe writes in his book. There was only rewriting leprosy for plague when the people was dying from the hunger. Same rewriting happened with non-existing HIV virus. People was always made scared of viruses and infectious diseases. That's a fundament for big pharma factories. They are so powerful, they're never going to give away their power and their money-making machines. Louis Pasteur, another well-known falsificator who was working for French government in 1872 while France was in a war with Germany. Deaths from the war was announced as deaths from smallpox. Germans say smallpox comes from France and France says smallpox comes from Germany. Louis Pasteur knew very well bacteria doesn't cause diseases, but since this theory was very useful, he ignored it. This theory was used often to announce quarantines, to develop hunger, to keep people terrified. He came up with that idea of invisible pathogens and called them virus and announced them thousand times smaller than bacteria. He takes samples from dead bodies, filters them and injects in dog's brain. Dog dies in convulsions with foam coming from his mouth and Pasteur calls it rabies. He announced that he has antidote 
for it so vaccine could be developed. He couldn't imagine that electronic microscope will be available for scientists after World War II, so scientists can see even thousand times smaller items than bacteria, and it will be proven that damaged bacteria are recovering with help of another bacteria. How viruses are found nowadays? If scientists announce he isolated virus, he does the test on the eggs, on the chicken eggs and the embryos. That's known test. If the embryo dies, it's announced that the scientist isolated the virus. They take sample from ill human or animal, inject that sample into egg composition. By studying which part of embryo going to be damaged first, they announce they isolated this or that virus. They call it isolation of virus when in fact they just killing embryos and no need to say there is no control group. According to Stephen Lanka's lectures, this picture is officially called picture of HIV virus. You can see particles released from the cell and absorbed. In biology, they call it endocytosis. Those are wide range of absolutely normal cell components. Those strange pictures that are represented as flu viruses are mixture of fat molecules and proteins. Using mixer and ultrasound, it's possible to photo them, but they are not stable and they do not carry any nucleic acid that's supposed to be in virus. According to Stefan Lanka's discoveries, in the beginning of last century, Rockefeller's foundation made reforms, in fact, sabotage on medicine. Many true knowledge and treatments was removed from the program of physicians' training programs. You can read the book called Lost Page in Biology. It's about the most important crossroads the medicine crossed 150 years ago. Periodically, our body needs cleansing from unhealthy food, from toxic vaccines, from chemicals in the medicine, from electromagnetic fields. Our body needs to get rid of all that biochemical waste that we store in our bodies. That's why flu, in fact, is a helper, because through the temperature and excretion, we clean our bodies. But all those man-made viruses that we're getting from vaccines are making us ill. Our bodies are not designed to fight with mercurium, aluminium, titanium, and other chemicals what's in there. They just making us more ill. They only destroy our immune systems. So the pandemics and epidemics can be called upon us. Okay guys, what can I say? I am not the doctor, but I would say eat healthy, breathe fresh air, and you will be healthy. I'm not here to tell you to take vaccine or not. All I'm saying, read the labels, do your own research, your body is still your choice. I hope you liked the video, don't forget, thumbs up, subscribe and see you very soon my friends.